Thank you for inviting me. I know it's the end of the day for you, but maybe, maybe we both learn something. Okay? I would like to show two talks. One, a general introduction about fluorescein and endocyanina verde, endocyanin green, with the Heidelberg. What the machine does and some photographs. And then I have a talk about feeder vessels. Very popular now looking for the feeder vessel for CNV. But most important, if there are questions, number one, for my English, and number two, okay, and number two, for the photographs, you stop and we discuss. Okay, better we, we do it step by step by step and, and we understand everything, then at the end it's not good, okay? Um, we know that Heidelberg is different from Fundus Camera, okay? In this office you have two systems. You have a Top Gun camera and you have Heidelberg. Different photographs. So many things we see with Fundus Camera, not the same with Heidelberg, okay? Because of the technology. Fundus Camera is a light bulb, okay? And a lens and flash bulb. But SLO is electronics and lasers. Different animal, completely different animal. What is the difference? The SLO uses a laser light source. Okay? It does 30 degrees, but you can do composites, very big composites. We can take 20 frames per second with the SLO. We have high contrast ICG, and we can do image processing. Now, Fundus camera, flash tube, we need filters. It's not a laser, it's filters, okay? maximum 60 degrees, only one frame per second. The ICG is not so good if you use Fundus camera, and, but the price is a little cheaper. Okay, but the images here are better than fungus camera. Any questions about basic, this is like a passport of the two systems. Will there be a, a wide angle for the, this one? Yes. No, we don't need because you have composite. Okay, I show examples. You cannot, with the SLO, with this SLO today is limited to 30 degrees because of the technology of the scanner. Okay? The scanner moves very fast, very, very fast. That is the noise we hear. That is the mirror scanning. Okay? It scans 30 degrees, okay? maybe 10,000 oscillations per, per minute. If you make it go big okay, for 90 degrees, it's impossible. It breaks. Okay. That is the limit. Okay. So we do composite. And it's okay. What does the SLO do? The field of view, we have 10 degrees. Okay. Fundus camera. Okay. Fundus camera cannot do this. 10 degrees. Only SLO. You do 10 degrees and get very good detail of focus. Fundus camera cannot do this. Okay? Because 10 degrees, very good quality for the SLO. Now, but you can do composite images okay? bigger than fundus camera. Okay? And you know, you do it here also for, for wide angle. Or okay. wide angles. Yeah. You will yes. have a, a greater resolution with a temper 10 degrees, no? Yes, with 10 degrees is great resolution. Very good resolution. Yeah. Pixelation. Yes. It's Smart. good resolution. Yes. 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 Um, and because what you say is digital image, okay, you get high resolution with digital images. Okay. Like this, like we see before. 
with Vantes camera, it's very difficult to get this. You see the cysts from the cystoid macular edema inside the macula. With Vantes camera, it's very difficult. Okay. Number two, what does it do? It is a confocal pinhole. That, that is the secret of the system. The secret of the system okay, is this. This, the fact that only images from here, only this focal plane, only that reaches the detector. Everything that is out of focus from here or from here does not go inside the pinhole. Very small 30 micron pinhole. It limits the information. Only what is in focal plane. Okay. That is why you get sharp focus and high contrast. The, the information that is not here, everything from here or from here, does not reach the detector. Okay. This is technical, but it's important to understand the difference. So the detector don't see the light out of focus. Absolutely. That is why it's high contrast. Because everything outside of the focal plane, here, you see the green, the green focal plane? It goes over there. It does not reach, it does not go in. Only this red line. Very, very clever solution. Yes, it, 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 very good. Okay, number one. Number two, you can move the laser forward and backward one diopter or one diopter back. Very accurate focus. Okay. The fundus camera, it's approximately, it's not exact one diopter. Oops, sorry. Well, that, this just shows this is the information that we just did. Okay. So what this does, it suppresses, it depresses all the light out of focus. Number two, we can get optical sections along the z-axis. Okay? Because it is confocal, we can move one diopter, one diopter, one diopter. Everything else is we don't see it. So this is one, one image, another diopter, another diopter, and a four, five, six diopters. So we can do three-dimensional images like the HRT, okay. that's a confocal system, so you move it. Okay. And this system gives high contrast and three dimension. What is the high contrast? We get images like this with high contrast. We can see the different layers of the choroid. This is the retina, this is one layer of choroid, Below there is second and even three layers because of the contrast. Okay? And late phase images, you yeah, have very high contrast. You can see good detail. This is maybe 35 minutes after injection. So we get very high contrast. Because of the optical system. And another example of high contrast images. Okay, this is angioid streaks, okay, with a C and a V. We get very high contrast because of the system. And another thing is three-dimensional information. This is the anterior surface of the lesion. We go a little deeper, deeper, and this is at the choroidal level. You see these vessels here they are not very bright there. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six diopters. That's about two millimeters inside the retina. And only with that system can you do it. It's like a tomograph, it does slices. Now we see here the maximum illumination, that means we are in focus. In, in this system, it does not get fuzzy like with a regular camera, okay? it gets dark because of the pinhole. If it's not in focus, it's dark. 
So here, okay, you see this blood vessel? It is sharp, but it is dark. Here, it's the same vessel. The same sharpness, but it's bright because it's in focus. Okay. Um, we've talked about digital. It's a low light exposure. It's much more comfortable for patients than fundus camera. Fundus camera, you get boom, boom. Every flash is very bright. Okay? With this, it's, it's low light. The other thing is we can do it with small pupil. This is the pupil of the patient, and that is the early and late stage of fluorescein after cataract surgery, okay? Even if it's a small pupil, we can get decent images. In the angiography, we know the difference between fluorescein and ICG is wavelength. 488 to 510, as opposed to the near infrared light. We've been using it for 40 years. This is only 10, 15 years practical. Okay. So there's a difference between the two, the two modes. Okay. This is the fluorescein we can do. That's fluorescein high magnification of an optic pit. And we do ICG, we can see very good details of the phobia of the CNV, for example. And late stage, just to finish up this part, simultaneous. This is the only system that can do simultaneous at the same time in one syringe. We mix the dye, fluorescein and ICG together. We can study movies, okay? The circulation time of the retina and the choroid. And you see this is exact same place because it's the same lens, two lasers through the same lens. Um, this just explains a little bit about the difference between ICG and fluorescein. Because ICG is a large molecule, and it, is, it, 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 it attaches to the blood protein, it does not leak like fluorescein from small vessels. And an example of the difference between fluorescein and ICG. This is fluorescein early stage. You see here, you see the CNV, late stage, diffuse and not clear. ICG stays the same size because the molecule does not leak from the small vessels. Another example, fluorescein and ICG, very strong application is looking for CNV inside PED, you know, PED, uh, pigment epithelial detachment. Okay. With fluorescein, we cannot tell where the CNV is. So we do ICG, very clear image of CNV inside PED. If you have hazy image, fluorescein is very bad. Fluorescein is very difficult. And it's hard to tell what is going on. Very grainy. But the ICG, very clear location of CNV. So both for cataract and for blood, ICG is better. Another example, a large hemorrhage with fluorescein. We don't know much. With ICG, very clear information about location of CNV. Sometimes we get images like this. Now, this is atrophy. When there is large area of atrophy, we can see the choroid even better. Because even though infrared light goes through RPE, retinal pigment epithelium blocks a little bit of light, not much. So here we see these vessels, and there is healthy RPE here, over here, no RPE, we see even better. Okay. This just shows that the RPE blocks a little bit, not much. And this is the subject of my next talk about feeder vessels, so I will not spoil it now. Okay. One other image of a hemorrhagic lesion with a cataract. And we see this is a PED with 
two locations of C and D. In myopic patients, ICG is very helpful in myopic patients. You can see lacrocrats very well, and the C and V inside the lacrocrats. We have done many myopic patients, and we find that many times the C and V is inside the lacrocrat. It's very, uh, very helpful to the early stage and the later stage. And if there, you know, sometimes there's multiple lack of cracks, you get very dramatic pictures with myopic patients. Both eyes. If you look into periphery, not the macula with ICG, you can see interesting things. For example, very slow blood flow and changes in the vessels. This is high magnification. So you see this beading of the vessels, that is uh, pulseless disease, you know, when there's no pulse, very slow uh, uh, pulse in the retina. You get interesting images you cannot see with fluorescein in the periphery. And another example, what, please, share, share with me. Now we got these uh, basics. What do you call them? Uh, Rosario. Rosario, beads, beads, yes. It's called yeah. beading. Yeah. yeah, same thing, beading. Yeah, yes, like, like, uh, yes, 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 same thing, yes. But with ICG, very dramatic picture. With fluorescein, not so good. So ICG also, you look in the periphery, you can find interesting things. You see here, vessel beading. And, of course, the continuous imaging, movies, okay? 30 years ago, 25 years ago, when I start work, this is what you do. Very primitive, okay? Today, there's digital images, and what it looks like is this. On the next talk. Okay, this is oh, this is Jerusalem. Okay, very special city, but not very much snow. Once every ten years, we get snow. Okay. Um, questions about the basics of ICG and fluorescein with this. This is just an introduction to explain how the system works. Questions? No. Okay. If there are any questions, please. Now, this is a talk about feeder vessels. Do, do we all know what feeder vessels are? Okay, it's now people, are, doctors are looking for feeder vessels very closely to treat, okay? Now, a little background, why feeder vessels are popular. A little, a little quick background, okay? AMD is the leading cause of vision loss in people over 65 in the US and in developed countries. Now, it's now almost epidemic because when more people that are born after 45, what we call the baby boomers, they are reaching that age as a large number of people. Now only less than 1% are treated successfully. Okay? And there are many subgroups, there's wet and dry, occult and classic, juxtaphobial and subphobial. It's not <coughs> one group of AMD. What are the statistics? There's 15 million people in the United States only with AMD. Only 10% are the wet type, but they are the most severe vision loss. And we get 2 million cases every year. New cases. Now what is wet near vascular AMD? Okay. Abnormal choroidal vessels. Some of the vessels break <coughs> through 
Crookes membrane. The vessels break here and leak fluid. We get the end stage, very poor vision. Okay. That's a compressed story, okay? This is what does a treatment do? What does treatment do to them? You know, there's only one type of treatment, the MPS treatment. Okay? And that is very, very aggressive. Destroy half the fovea, destroy 80% of the fovea, or maybe the whole thing. That's the only standard treatment that people agree on. But that's very, very bad because we end up with a central scotoma. Okay? The patient is not happy. The family is not happy, and the doctors are not happy. It's not a good idea. So there's there are several approaches today to treating subphobia. One of them is visudine. I'm not not talking about visudine now. We talk about feeder vessel. Okay. What is the objective? To close the CNV by treating the feeder vessel outside the fovea. The feeder vessel is a vessel which feeds the CNV. We want to catch it outside. What is the process? This is what our lecture is today. Identify the feeder vessel with high-speed digital ICG angiography. That is this, this talk today. And at, that's number one. Number two, we assess, evaluate the feeder vessel for possible treatment. Not every vessel we find is good for treatment. But first of all, we have to identify then, after we evaluate, then we can photocoagulate. And there are two types. One is ICG guided or ICG enhanced, where you inject ICG and then you treat with infrared laser. And the other one is with argon laser. Okay, just like you do regular laser treatment, but with argon for the pinpoint, a very small location. Any question about this? Or it's okay. Is this too fast, too slow, or it's fine? So, we have C and V, okay, and we locate the feeder vessel. You see, this vessel actually goes in there and reaches there. So, there are two ways to treat this vessel. Number one is we take argon laser and just treat there. The other one is if we inject dye, then we treat. Okay. Two ways to treat. Either with ICG dye and then use an infrared laser or with argon laser directly onto the site. And then these, these vessels, they collapse and they die. This is an example from some clinic, Laser Murphy Retina Center. They are the ones that started this idea of feeder vessels and they give these pictures to everybody okay, before and after treatment. And I show some of my own, but this is an example they give of fluorescein before and after uh, feeder vessel treatment. Now, this talk is about identifying the vessels. How do we do it? Number one, we have to understand that ICG is the best instrument for this job to find it. Okay? If you want to find your keys in the dark, you use a flashlight. You want to find feeder vessel, you need to use ICG. Everything has a tool. Why? Number one, like we discussed before, ICG does not leak from the small vessels because of the large molecule. And number two, the near infrared light goes through the RPE so we can see the choroidal vessel. Many times the feeder vessel is beneath the RPE, sometimes even blood. The ICG goes through the blood and the RPE. Okay? Number two, the fluorescein dye leaks in contrast to the ICG. And it makes it very difficult to see the feeder vessels because the dye leaks. And of course, some of the vessels are hidden underneath the RPE, and that blocks the FFA information. Any questions about this? Okay. Example. Okay, we have blood. We have AMD patient. Fluorescein. 
Okay, early stage, pretty early stage. No details here. Late stage, even worse. No, nothing to look for, no source. Okay? But if we do ICG, we see many details. Early stage of the ICG vessels. But that is not enough. It's not enough to do ICG. We have to do high magnification. There are three parts. This talk is high magnification, high, high speed, ICG. So first we look at ICG. We say ICG is better than fluorescein. Then we look at high magnification. Okay, we see much more details if we take a bigger image. And then we see the details of the neovascularization, and we see the feeder vessels here. Okay, does everybody see the network here, the network there, and the feeder vessels there? Okay, that is only visible with ICG. And even a little later stage, still details with ICG, but nothing on fluorescence. Now, this is the second part. Even with ICG, some of the vessels are seen only in the first seconds of the dye arrival. Only the first five seconds. After that, you can't see them. So, only some ICG systems, fundus cameras with videotapes, or SLOs like the one you have here, are good for this job not every ICG system. And then we have to study the high speed movies faster than five frames per second. They are like movies okay, to see the feeder vessels. Some examples. Fluorescein and look at ICG. Okay? Early, late, early, late. Again, I am not saying if to treat this or not to treat. I'm just saying to locate and to identify the feeder vessels. You can see very clearly here, this is the source, okay, like a fan of this big CNV. Another example, fluorescein, some blood, leakage from the membrane. This is still early stage, but with ICG, very clearly you can see where this starts from. Okay. Now, some problems. It is not very easy. It's actually very difficult. Some problems to do this. Why are the problems? What are the problems? Number one, eye movement. Patient moves. Okay? And we only have five or ten seconds. Number two, it's difficult to get sharp focus because it's very small spot. Number three, sometimes you see many vessels, but no feeder vessel. It's confusing. Number four, five, sometimes we think a retina vessel is a choroid vessel, but it's not. So we must make sure what the vessel is. And then, after everything, we have to determine which patient will benefit from the photography and the laser. We are still learning. It is not like diabetes. We have ETDRS. We know diabetes, you reach a certain stage, you treat. Here we're still learning. And after we do the ICG, there's a lot of work to find the vessel. And I show examples. Any questions about this? Now, number one, if we have atrophy and scars on fluorescein, okay, this is a scar. This is atrophy, this is CNV, this is scar from treatment. This is what it looks like in fluorescein. We do ICG, it can be very confusing. Is, are these feeder vessels? Is that a feeder vessel? Is that a feeder vessel? Okay. No, only this one. Okay. And this one here. These are the feeder vessels. So we have to look at the picture and Every, everything studied very carefully to identify the feeder vessel. Number two, we have atrophy and scars. This is a cataract patient with some hemorrhage. Okay. We do ICG, and what maybe this is 
because the hemorrhage is over there, and maybe that is the feeder vessel for C and B. So the second thing we do, we take high magnification pictures, and we look very carefully. This is an RPE rip, okay? rolled up RPE over here, and that is the C and B. This is a normal choroidal vessel, not the feeder vessel. When the RPE rolls up, it blocks the information because it is very, it is much thicker. Normal RPE does not block the ICG, but when you roll it up, it blocks. Okay? So this is here, there is no RPE, so you see the vessels very well, but it's not a feeder vessel. Sometimes we have a membrane with fluorescein like that, some hemorrhage, we do ICG, many, many, many vessels, okay? But there's no feeder vessel. Sometimes the feeder vessel comes from the bottom, oh, like that. You cannot treat it. It doesn't come from the side, but from the bottom. So these vessels, they hide the feeder vessel. Sometimes we have a vessel in fluorescein, it says maybe that's a feeder vessel. We do ICG, we see that, maybe that's feeder vessel. But then, you see, no, it's a retinal vessel and an astomosis, okay, communicating vessel into the choroid. So if we see this in early stage, it's not enough. Okay, this is arterial phase. We wait a little bit, we see it's actually a retinal vessel, not to confuse that with feeder vessel. How do we do that? How do we do this work? We prepare the patient to cooperate. We have to determine the size of the vein, not too fast and not too slow the injection, because if it comes too fast, we lose it. Okay? And always do the fluorescein first, so you practice with the patient. We use 2.5 cc of 20% fluorescein, 25 milligrams of ICG. We use the HRA. 10 or 20 degrees of the retina, high magnification. Okay? We explain the importance of looking straight ahead to the patient. Maybe we practice. We say try once, try again without injecting. Okay? And the results look like this. Okay, we look at it once fast and then we look at it slowly again. You can see the C and V over here. Okay, and over there. Okay, so this is the C and V, but now it's maybe 15 seconds. Where where is the where is the feeder vessel? So we start again and we stop. Okay? We stop at the beginning. See this vessel there? We start again, and stop again, and it's slowly filling up. And now you can see very clearly it's feeding that net. Freeze again. Okay? Now it's very difficult to see because there's, everything else is full of ICG. Only the first few seconds can you see it very clearly. Questions? Okay. Want to see again or see another one? Okay. Again? Okay. The first second. Okay. The first second, that is the beginning. And you stop it again. And you start and stop. You see there very clearly. Okay, because everything here is dark. But if you continue, in another two seconds, now it's already difficult to see because there is so much light around. So you do a movie, and then you study it again and again and again until you see the second word arrives.
and that vessel comes from the disc area. Near the disc, yes. So it's, it's unusual, but it happens. It's not, it's a myopic patient also. It's not so close to the disc. I find this very, very interesting, but yes. from the practical point of view, yes. how do you, do you localize that vessel to the, to the patient to treat it? I don't understand, I'm sorry. Yes. Here it's very clear. Yes. But with the patient, if I, I, I want to shoot the, the yes. vessel, how do you find it? How Wait, do I find it? We, we, we get to that. First, you see, first, there's several stages. First, we have to see the vessel. Okay? Only one out of ten patients can you find the feeder vessel. It's very hard. Okay? Um, second example. Okay, we look at it and then we look at it again. So it's very fast. You know? We don't know what's happening, so we look once. Okay? It's very confusing. We don't know what's going on. We do it again. We freeze. Okay? When we see the first vessels, there's one here and one there. Then we go again. And we look. So, okay, that's going over there. See that? Going over there. See this? C and V. Okay, now you can see very clearly. This is the CNV. This is not coro normal choroidal vessels. These are the choroidal vessels. This is in focus anterior. The net is being fed from over there. Okay, and this is the second part of it. But because of patient movement, I cannot get two parts inside, but I see they start here and they start there. Okay. Now you can see here both parts. Another example. Okay, first image. Very clear. Starting over there, ranching this whole area, the subfoveal scene. What? The other down. You know? Here? Yes, the other. I don't know. And then. Here? No, no, down, down. And then it's down. Here? It's down. This? No, right. This? This? This, yeah. No? I don't know. No? No. I, I see this when we look at the because picture later one. on. That is, that is seen. Okay. Oh, now this is a the next case. This is a fluorescein early and late case. We see the subfoveal CMD with much leakage. And the movie of this patient. See, now we cannot see anything, only the first few seconds. We do it again. Stop for a second, you see that, that vessel over there? That is the CMV being fed from there and from there. And already now, it's getting to be very difficult. Now, impossible. So only the first few seconds, we have to sit and go stop, start, stop, start, and we find it. <coughs> now, the next case looks like this in fluorescein. And feeder vessel movie looks like this. It's very fast. And we do it again. Second. 
start. Okay, starts over there. Okay? Then we'll see it starts over there. Actually, it starts from there. It feeds into there. There's another one over there. Now, a comparison movie, when we do the same time, fluorescein and ICG, with the same injection, okay? What does that look like? This is not so much for feeder vessels, but to show the difference between fluorescein and ICG. Fluorescein is on the left. You see already, you see the circulation there, that is starting to leak. ICG is not leaking. Already this is leaking. Okay? There's no leakage here. Okay, maybe 20 seconds after injection, already you get fuzzy borders from the CNV vessels, very, very clear on the ICG. Okay, this is taken at the same time, same injection, same thing. Just, this just shows the point why ICG is better. And another example. Fluorescing here, ICG on the right. No details here. Very clear details on the feeder vessel on the ICG. Usually I do ICG alone for feeder vessel. But in this case, I wanted to show the difference between the two, how there is absolutely nothing of fluorescein and very clear detail of ICG. Now, sometimes we mistake, like I said before, retina vessels for choroid vessels. And I'll show an example. Okay, look carefully at this so we can look at it again. See, okay, well, is that a feeder vessel? Is that a feeder vessel? <coughs> This whole thing is elevated. It is actually in the retina. It's in the hemangioma. Okay? So we should not make the mistake of thinking that as a feeder vessel. This is a retina vessel feeding with the hemangioma, not a choroidal structure at all. Now, this is just a case, one case of bringing an example of the one that we treat. Okay? This is late stage fluorescein of a patient with a CNV. This is Pre-treatment, ICG, early and late stage, big, 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 double CNV. This is fluorescein after the treatment, early stage, late stage. This is ICG after treatment, early stage, late stage. And the most interesting is before treatment and after treatment ICG. And you can see here, this is where the treatment was. 80 or 90 percent disappeared. A little bit left over here. Everything is gone. This big, big, big CMV is gone from the treatment over there. And some thoughts about this, okay? High speed, high magnification ICG, looking at pinpointing the CMV is feasible. It's possible, but it's very challenging. There's a lot of work. Special equipment we need. Not every camera can do it. Recent studies show that there are benefits to photocoagulating a small point in the retina and not the MPS, you know, big photocoagulation. And if larger scale studies are successful and show this is a good method, there is a potential for a great demand for this photographic procedure. Because if the studies show that it's a good idea, there will be many requests for photographers to look for feeder vessels. And, oh, this is the other part of my country, this is the beach in my country. I know you have beaches here, but... So, if, if it is successful, it is a lot of work for the photographer. It can take a long time 
to do the patient photography, and also after the photography to find the vessels. Questions, please. Do you want to see something again? Is it? Is it? No problem, we have it. This, you should make this with this. With this. Yes. yes. You don't need any other, other kind of device? Yes. On this. Yeah, but this, you see, this without this is no good. <laughs> it's a lot of work. A lot of work, yes. But that machine, yes some practice, but I will be in communication with Hugo by email or by telephone. I can help him, it's no problem. But it takes some time to learn. You cannot say, tomorrow morning, give me five feeder vessels. No, it takes practice. Many, many patients practice. And many, you know, many, many patients, eventually we learn how to do it. It's difficult, but it's possible, and this is, the best machine in the world to do it. Okay. There's some other machines also, okay, but this is excellent. But it takes practice. That's like everything else. If you want to be good, you have to practice it. But it's possible. It's definitely possible. Uh, now, the next question is, if we find the feeder vessel, do we treat it? That's a different question. Now, for your question. Okay, I don't forget. <laughs> Yes. Uh, so, sir, do you have a, a percentage about the, the, the finding of the finding of the feeder vessel? Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't know. Yes, any one percent. One percent. One per. Yes. Okay. Yeah. One, one uh, out of ten uh, patients, do you find a feeder vessel? Approximately. Maybe two out of ten, but you see, it depends on what patient you choose. You have to choose patients. But with this machine, with the HR. It's not the machine, it's the patient. You see, when I say 1 out of 10, I don't mean that the 10 patients have a feeder vessel and I only find one. Yes. If I take 10 wet AMD patients, all the patients come in the door, 10 of them have C and B, exudation, blood, okay? Maybe 1, maybe 2 out of 10, I can see the feeder vessel. Not because of the machine, because of the patient. Okay? Some of them do not have feeder vessels. Some of them, they move a lot. Some of them, it's just not visible. Some of them come from the bottom. Good pictures like this, 10, 15% of all the AMD patients, not Drusen patients, not diabetic patients, neovascular AMD patients. Now, how do we find it? Okay. I go up to this good example. Okay. For example, here. Can we turn the lights up for a second? This is before treatment. Okay. This is an easy case because we have we call retinal landmarks. Very clear. Okay. This is the P and B here. That is one vessel, retina vessel. Three big retina vessels, maybe four, that I can use for landmarks. Okay. This is late stage, okay, but I have early stage of this fluorescein. I don't have it here. Let's say this is it. It's easy to make a drawing with a pencil on here where the feeder vessel is. There's two methods of doing it. Number one, the simple method is taking ICG picture, fluorescein picture, and looking and saying, okay, it's over there. Okay. The more expensive method is to ask the photographer to do it on a computer. It's, both methods are good. Okay. You take the ICG image, okay, and you, you make a drawing where it is in relation to the vessels, and you put on the fluorescein or red free image. I did not say it's easy. I don't say it's easy for the photographer or for the doctor. It's not easy. 
But if it, if it works, it's very good for the patient. More questions. This is too easy for me. Only two questions. Yes. The study two eyes with one no. injection. No, 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 no. No, no sense. No sense. It's, it's the only one eye. Now, there's several ways of doing it. You can give all the injection and study one eye. Okay? That's the way to do it at the beginning. After you do that, you practice using only maybe one cc of the dye, okay? Inject one cc, take images, wait 10 or 15 minutes. It goes a small amount of dye, it goes out of the circulation, it gets dark in the eye. You take another cc, inject again. You get another bolus, okay? You take pictures. Wait 10, 15 minutes, it goes dark again, you have third chance. After third chance, already there is too much background fluorescence because there's ICG in the body. You cannot do it. One, two, maybe three times. But I don't do that method usually. Usually I do one bolus and I try to find it. You can try twice if you want. But if you do half of the amount, you get too much background information you need to go from dark to white. You see with the movies, it goes from black, you see the dye come in. That's where you get the information. The best way to do the second eye is the day after or the day after? Yes, yes, yes. After two hours? Before. You can try, you can try. After two or three hours as possible. But you're going to say, you know, you know. No. Yes, ICG. You see, with this camera, because it's very, very sensitive, because of the laser, even after two or three hours, you might get background fluorescence from ICG, if not good. But when, when you have experience, okay, you do one eye. After 30 seconds, you go over to left eye. Maybe you see information, but you can't do everything, you know. You have a knife and a fork. You can't change them. One tool, one for this, one for that. It's, if you try, we say in my, con my country, if you try to dance at two weddings at the same time, you fall on your face. Okay? You dance at one wedding, you finish, you go to a second wedding, you dance there. Okay? It's, uh, I know it's very expensive, I know the patience is difficult to come, I know they have other problems, but. Yes. One stupid idea, but apart, why not to combine the system? Uh, like one viewfinder to fix the target and to apply the normal laser to make a formidable operation. Mm. In, one, in one year. Because you can have one uh, formidable precision of the treatment. I agree. It's, it's, it's on the way? It's on the way, yes, of course. It's not a stupid question. No, 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 it's not down the way. It's, the problem is to, to get the magnification. You can take a fiber optic and put it inside a little TV screen in the eyepieces of the slip lamp laser and bring the image in to superimpose on the retina. Yes. It's possible, but very difficult because you have to get magnification exactly the same. So the vessels will, will, will match because if one is big and one is small, you don't get. You have to get the magnification the same. If it is simple, it is already in the market. It's not simple, but it's a good application. Yes. Okay, no, you you do it. You, know? you try. It's it's a great idea, but it's not yet uh, not yet feasible. Because, you know, if you take that machine, you cannot deliver laser from that machine for treating. Because the optics for focusing the laser are different than the optics for the scanning laser. You see? So you cannot deliver laser for treatment through that machine. So, 
you want to bring the image from that machine into slit lamp. But the optics of the slit lamp are difficult. It's complicated. The complication is yeah. one independent alignment of yes. both signals. Yes. To be in nature, because it's over the target. Yes. It's high in the top. But it's, it's, it's a, it's attractive idea, very attractive. And I know already two, maybe three companies, they are trying to make it work. <coughs> More questions? There may be other areas, not, not only feeder vessels. That I can, I can help. Any questions about other cases of if, if you have experience you want to know, I, if I can help, please. You have some uh, macro analysis? Macro? Analysis? Uh, let me think. If I have, it's... It, it's... Only, only one, but it's difficult to find. It's somewhere in one of the lectures, but not, I don't have a lecture with many macro No. No, we, we, we have one. I see, yeah, multiple. I shall be, yes, very nice. I never see multiple macro aneurysms like that. And why the people who are working with the misodyne, they are trying to destroy all life with a bomb instead to go with a, with a, a, a shock. And so they don't perform there and say, no, we need no Indochinese green. I saw that at uh, Lausanne and also the people in Buenos Aires. Well, but if we show for this, it's not the same too to destroy the, the vida vessel than to destroy the yeah. whole retina. Yeah. Well, it's there are several more answers. rational this. Number the one. Is that you do. Yeah. You are not always I agree. able to, to find it. If you physiodyne, you say it's a big weapon, yes? Yeah. And not a small. What is big costs much money. Yeah. Okay? Number one. Number two. That is the way, you know, you take a big hammer, you go boom, yeah. okay? You destroy everything around. I don't think Vizgerdine will be here in five years or seven years, something else. It is because after three or four treatments of Vizgerdine, there is damage to RPE, already damage to RPE, and that is no good. Oh, and I saw the cases over one year now in Europe. Yes. The same patients, and they are treated three times. Yes. There is no, I don't show difference. Proof. No difference. Mm -hmm. We have done many visual patients in my clinic. Maybe almost 300. The best group is the young myopes. Yeah, and that, that was also the. The only, one, the only one yes. in the world, the young myopes. Young myopes. It's like magic. Not everybody, but a high percent, and they are so happy. The young myopes is really very successful. The old uh, AMD patients is no, pretty disappointing. Have you started? you start here, Vizudine? No. Here, me. The thing is that we are performing a, a porphyria. 
it's a very the, the danger to the, yes. the, the nervous system is yes. terrific. Yes, I didn't know that. I want to send a, a, a doctor here who was a pediatrician. He wrote the thing and he wanted to go to, to another country. Yes. Before that, I never will do that. I published the first two cases of Porphyria here in Uruguay, and that is terrific. We, we, are, yes. we are preparing and we are creating a, a potential after the two or three treatments yes. more danger than, than the benefit. Yeah, or organism. You know, the, the, the potency of Vizudine is, is very potent because it is not selective for only the CNV vessels. It goes to the whole body, you know, and they make it very, very strong, very concentrated, so enough goes into the membrane, but it affects the whole body very much. I know, every, every place I go, they complain about the Visudine being so expensive and, and the, the side effects and everything like that. But, you know, it is, uh, it's also psychology. Patients who have AMD, they will do anything. They will, they will do anything. I think it's, it's maybe, it's like, it's like if you go for a psychologist for 10 years, okay, it's like having three or four Vigidine treatments. Yes. Uh, but they want to have a quick solution. And then they say, okay, I've tried everything. It's disappointing. But if you have pigment epithelial detachment, or blood, or multiple soft bruising, then it's good to do an ICG. If you have a myopic patient and you are not sure if there is a CNV, it helps also. If you don't find the feeder vessel, yes. you can try a concentration. You can feel less. Yeah. You can shoot the concentration. Yes, but that, but that is all, again, that is like MPS, that's a large area. You get big scotoma at the end. The whole idea of not, of doing feeder vessel is to get a very small scotoma, extra folio, extra folio. Usually the front covers the fovea, otherwise the, the vision is better. Uh, in those cases, you have the Mm -hmm. If you repeat the endocyanine, endocyanine. sometimes, one one, uh, yes. month, not one month, one week. One month is too much because it's an exudative patient. So we wait uh, one week. Sometimes, some, yes, not many, not many. You see, also it is also a question of anatomy. Sometimes, because of the anatomy of the choroid and the retina, you cannot see the feeder vessel. Sometimes it's not possible. Maybe with more experience, maybe with more cases, maybe with more research, okay? We know better how to see the feeder vessel. This is only the beginning, only the beginning, the first year, maybe two years. If you remember, 30 years ago with fluorescein and diabetes, and fluorescein and, and AMD. Every six months, every year, something new come out about fluorescein. Okay? <laughs> Suddenly we do, we see papilledema, we do central serous retinopathy, then diabetes, then many things. And then Dr. Gass writes his book, and everybody knows so much. Same thing now. We are learning all the time. For me, it's very exciting. Okay, in my career, only a few things come along which are brand new, completely new. This is one of them. So it's very interesting. I don't know in five years if this will be very popular or not. But with AMD, there is so little we can do. You know, very little. There is MPS. There is Visudine. There is feeder vessel, vitamin supplements. Uh, 
what else, okay? That's it. So, in my profession, this is exciting. I hope you enjoy it. Yes, it is. It is something new, really something new. We don't have two years ago. Okay, I yes. I want to know about the hotspot. Mm. Hot hotspot? Hot yes. Point. What is the English? No, hotspot is, is the C and B in ICG. When you see have a hotspot, that is where the C and B is. Okay? But usually hotspot, the term, the terminology is for different system, not for this system for a system with fundus camera, ICG with fundus camera. Okay. There's different optics, it looks different. But the hotspot is where the C and B is with ICG. Okay, it's a small world. We all have uh, electronic mail and Here's your professor of photography and email, and he'll be in touch. I only have one problem. I regret that I'm only here for one day because there is no airplanes, no thing, no oh, seats wait. for me on no, flight. I wait. I, I call. I we called so many times today, and I will call at five o'clock in the morning to Germany to see maybe I can go back to sleep. But if not, I have to leave. But I hope I come back again. And then you can show me your movies, okay? And the beach I also. Send, I, I, I want to send you. And the beach. No, no, he, no he, he beach. <laughs> Don't send me the movies. <laughs> no, the, the, movie, beach. the movie <laughs> is, is, is 10 megabytes. Don't send me the movie. <laughs> <laughs> he will go there. He will go there. Bring it. That's OK. Yes, good. We have Topless 3. You have what? Topless 3. <laughs> in our, in our no, chair. it's what? Topless 3 yes. movies? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Each one. Each one. <laughs> now I heard about the beaches, and I, I, I before I come, I, I read a little bit about, and they say beautiful beaches for tourists and boats and marinas and everything. But uh, that's why I, I hope tomorrow, for one month, I am asking for a ticket on Friday. They say no, only Thursday or Saturday. So. But it's good, it's bad. If I have everything in life, it's not good. Always I have to have something to look forward to, okay? Because if you have everything, you have nothing. That's, uh, that's the way I feel. So, I know, I know I have something I did not finish in Montevideo. I have to come and see some people, go to the beaches. And <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.